Welcome to the Bible Answer Man broadcast. Here's your host, Hank Hanegraaff. Yeah, thank you very much, Randy. We have been going through the Beatitudes in the last broadcast. I talked about the pure in heart. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. In fact, the last three Beatitudes are all P's. The pure in heart, the peacemakers, and those who are persecuted. So let's look at the seventh beatitude. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the sons of God. In speaking about peace, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is in fact speaking about himself. Because just as Isaiah prophesied Christ would be called the Prince of Peace, as such, For us to be peacemakers ourselves means to be a son of the incarnate Christ, to be a son of God. This is precisely what St. Paul says, for he himself is our peace, the one who has made both one and then has broken down the middle wall of separation. So he's made both one, broken down the wall of separation, so as to create in himself one new man from the two, thus making peace, that he might reconcile them both to God in one body through the cross, thereby putting to death the enmity. He came and preached peace to you, you who were afar off, and to those who were near, for through him we both have access by one Spirit to the Father. So the two, the Gentiles and the Jews, are no longer at odds. They're one in Christ. Are Christians guilty of blind faith? Read Hank Hanegraaff's book, Has God Spoken? Click on the eye above. The Apostle Paul says it doesn't matter whether you're Jew or Greek, whether you're slave or free, whether you're male or female, if you are in Christ, then you are heirs in the one who brings the two together and breaks the wall of separation. Through Christ, the Prince of Peace, there is only one chosen people who form one covenant community beautifully connected by the cross. It is the work of all genuine Christians to follow in the footsteps of the Prince of Peace. Wherever there is strife, true followers of God become peacemakers, peacemakers in the spirit of the Master. In fact, All those who are used by God to proclaim the gospel of peace are thereby peacemakers and that they in turn are taking the enemies of God and transforming them into sons of God. And so we might rightly say, blessed are the peacemakers for they will be called sons of God. Well, the last beatitude has to do with persecution. And I want to spend a good deal of time on this beatitude. For our Lord says, Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. He follows that up by saying, Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you on account of me. Rejoice and be glad. Why? Because great is your reward in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. So the first thing you need to, uh, you need to take away from this beatitude is that in persecution we rejoice and be glad for a reason, because great is our reward in heaven. But the question is, what does it mean to be persecuted? Well, in in a sense, persecution is a continuum. 
It's a continuum ranging from harassment and oppression ultimately to, to the specter of cruel death. So, for example, in the Levant, if you are a Christian, it can very well not only lead to the loss of property, but to imprisonment. And as we've seen so often on the news, unfortunately, in the last 10 years, beheading. In America, you might not die for being a Christian, but instead, you will face discrimination. And that, in and of itself, is also persecution. Today, there are Christian schools in danger of losing their accreditation. There are chaplains who, who speak out against transgenderism. And because of that, they lose their pensions. There's an author who challenges the cancel culture and as a result, his writings are deemed intolerable. And because they're deemed intolerable, they're banned. All of this is part and parcel of what Jesus is speaking about when he speaks about persecution for the sake of righteousness. If the world hates you, said our Lord, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. Yet because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Learn to defend your faith and live life as a true disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen to the Bible Answer Man broadcast at equip.org. In essence, persecution is inextricably woven together with being a disciple of the Savior. So the question that we have to address again and again when it comes to persecution is how do we respond to persecution? And the answer is not left in mystery. Paul actually answers the question unequivocally. Paul says, being reviled, we bless. Being persecuted, we endure. Being defamed, we entreat. Not retreat, but we entreat. What Jesus makes clear in this beatitude is that as Christians, we must value eternal truth over temporary convenience. And that we must do this even to the point of shedding our own blood. Defiance of governmental power through the proclamation of Christian values brings death in many places around the world. And yet Christians are willing to die. In places like Korea and Somalia and Pakistan and Iran, Saudi Arabia, Iraq, the list goes on. We're still in America. And in America, persecution can bring on a different kind of travail. You might be called homophobic, transphobic, misogynistic, bigoted, hateful. Why? Because you're proclaiming the love of Christ. It wasn't all that long ago that I read a Wall Street Journal article on the persecutions of Christians worldwide, and it noted that in 2020, there are unprecedented challenges for persecuted Christians around the world. And if that is true in 2020, how much more in 2021? In the recent past, you look at Nigeria, where more than 27,000 Christians died at the hands of Islamic militias. That exceeds the number of ISIS casualties in Iraq and Syria. More than one million Christians in Saudi Arabia remain unable to worship at all. And Iran continues to harass and imprison Christian converts. And in China, Christian churches face a brutal crackdown by the Communist Chinese Party. 
Turkish-backed militias have persecuted Armenian and Syrian uh, uh, descendants of Christians who survived the Ottoman genocide in northeast Syria and, and, and other places around the world. When I come back for the break, I want to talk not only about this hard kind of persecution, but the soft totalitarianism that we are facing now in the West. Persecution is an ongoing reality, but there's a silver lining. We'll talk about all that and more when we come back. 